Hi, Warriors. Hello, Forex Gal. Let's have a good week. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Had time to sign up. Promo ends today. Yep, today's the 30th. Also, with it being the 30th, uh, something I learned from Steve Volge, I normally look for midweek, mid-month reversals, but since I met Steve and have listened to his commentary for a while, I've learned from him that you could look for the reversals also at the beginning of a month. So we have the beginning of October, scary, scary month coming up. And with that happening, I'm being patient to top pick the dollar. I uh, still think there's a, a pretty good chance that we could get up towards this uh, 9980-ish level, which probably would take Euro down to eight and a half or so. Uh, we are diverging there, but Euro's weaker than cable. Uh, Euro pound giving it back up after rallying a bit. So uh, that's really something that I'm keyed on to. Uh, we had that pretty nice break in the S&Ps. Friday, I talked about selling it. We were about 288, and we got this big sell-off to the 50-day uh, here. And this is still the line in the sand. That's 2940 level. So we'll see if we could get some type of follow-through. I uh, do believe now that we start trading over uh, this MA, say 287, 285, which rejected it here, uh, that we have a shot for new highs, okay? We start taking out this lower, see how they're compressing, lower bully band here, uh, right around, yes, uh, Friday's lows, which were, I think, what were they, 44, okay? Coming in at 48, uh, then I think we'll have this test. But the jury's out. I mean, the news backdrop is pretty negative. Um, I've kind of changed my mind here in the end. I don't think that we're done. And I think we're going to fulfill uh, this objective that we had from down here, which uh, could take it up to the 109 level. If you just measure it from here to here, it's going to give you 109. And there's a 1.618 level and kind of a third drive line up there on the weekly. So a lot of confluence, a shade under 110. So if the S&Ps can crack resistance overhead, I think that uh, the N has a shot to head up towards uh, above the 109 handle. And I'll probably be looking for shorts there. Of course, we can't take out this uh, 104 and a half level. It's really not much of a, you know, uh, big trade. Uh, someone on Twitter said the other day that they uh, wish I would run for uh, president of the United States. And I said that uh, I had a lot of skeletons in my closet, more than you'll see on Halloween. But I accept, accept the nomination for the FX volatility, uh, FX volatility party because I'd like to see more just like you. Uh, gold, we finally have a little breakdown, but I always have a hard time chasing markets, especially after a big break here. So, you know, we're still holding support. Silver is weaker, starting to look like an ABC, and maybe we're eventually headed back down towards 1580. The failing rally was a trade of the week, in my view, last week. And crude keeps giving it up. And I keep waiting for a rally to sell. So I've been waiting for a rally to sell since, you know, last week. Haven't gotten one. Um, still waiting. And uh, I just want to show you something because there was a pretty good article someone sent me about uh, the Chinese and trade and uh, I know that we've nailed down some shorter term targets at 23 or so for a third drive, but I just want everyone to keep the big picture in mind, even if the S&Ps do make a new high, that if this formation is correct on the weekly and it's a cup and handle or a head and shoulders formation, the measurement is huge. It's like 760 and it's hard for me to 
be able to see a sanguine market uh, with uh, USD1 uh, charging towards those numbers. But right now, we'll take it a day at a time. It's starting to look like the right shoulder is getting a little stretched up here, and it's not going to be a right shoulder, uh, but possibly a third drive up here, maybe with the dollar, both the yuan and the dollar peak here on the third drive. And that could be the jet fuel for the S&Ps and maybe trade 30, 80 or so. So uh, those are some of my looks. And uh, really important, guys, that you take advantage of this price. 35% uh, off the annual is the best deal out there. Last day, coach. I know. Last day. Good morning. Uh, as they say, good morning, Steve. The window, imagine a window. And it, I, through that window is opportunity. And as the window is slowly closing, you hardly have any room to squeeze through that window anymore. You have 24 hours to play limbo through that window to become part of our trading community. So, Steve, I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, you know, an, <clears throat> an interesting piece of mythology. You know how um, ancient Greeks envisioned opportunity. As a, as, a, as a woman without hair. So if you didn't grab her as she was coming, then it was too late. Oh, okay. That's true. It's oh, that's, I, yeah. I, I ancient mythology. Must huh? be making this up. He must be making this stuff up, seriously. No, no not. come on. It's Didn't true. you ever hear that one? Yeah, yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. Huh? Okay, well, uh, what if the woman has hair, but you're a hairstylist and you shave her head? Uh, back then, as you understand, there were no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Save like that. Women, I'm assuming, <laughs> you know, like that lead singer of the Eurythmics, Grace, uh, whatever her name was. And anyway, so Annie Lennox. Annie yeah, Lennox. there you go. So uh, yeah, I, I'll remember that from now on, Steve. I'm not going to let any women with hair pass me up anymore. <laughs> right? I want to be lucky <laughs> in more ways than one. So. <laughs> I, I hope everyone had a great September, you know, to give yourself a, an edge for the rest of the year, because uh, I think we're, you know, with what's going on in peach. Ziggy, I didn't say grope her. I said grab her. <laughs> oh, he said grope, yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> hang out with us for uh, at least two months. You get two for one and check it out. And I think you'll be happy. And uh, I'm, I was sure happy to find these guys and, it's helped me in the markets, uh, just, you know, being able to go to, you know, if I have some ideas or I'm not clear on anything, just to go to the dashboard and, you know, uh, I don't have to make a call to Blake or I don't have to make a call to Greg or send, <clears throat> or send coach, him any. Huh? Um, uh, coach, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but if I may have the opportunity. Um, there is one more thing, uh, because there is like a mini scandal going on on Twitter, like people exposing like educators for falsifying, uh, you know, account performance and things like that by creating, you know, uh, dummy servers on MetaTrader. Um, uh -huh. People that are part of Forex Analytics, they know that, you know, um, having to do with our patterns in play, there is full transparency. I mean, we, we, we post online immediately everything before it happens so you know if if or not you know our ideas are working everybody that's a member of the premium plan knows about it besides everything yeah. else of course that we do. i mean the, you know i there are a lot of charlatans out and there. and i'm saying that because you know yeah. very well that there are a lot of people that are naive enough to believe that you can make a fortune out of like an account of ten thousand dollars and make a living of like three thousand dollars per month and things like that those those things we've said it on the webinar as well like you know, multiple times. Th those things are fantasies, right? I well, mean, you know what I say, Steve? People have asked me, Dale, uh, can I trade for a living with 10,000? And I said, sure, if you want to live under a bridge. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, uh, I've i talked about this before that, uh, you know, as, you know, talented and knowledgeable about the markets that, the team is to me what's even more important are the ethics and that everyone on the team cares about what happens to 
uh, people, not a, not even uh, all have to be in our community that we're rooting for everyone. And I, you know what, Steve, I also think that some of those guys that are doing something like that would not bring in competitors to be interviewed to possibly lose a subscriber. So uh, I mean, there are a lot of things That's I think that, that set us apart from whoever the guy is who probably lost some money and is angry at the world. But, uh, you, you know, anyway, uh, you know, the cream rises to the top. Uh, I don't, you know, I'd be pretty surprised if people. Uh, yeah, and <clears> I, I can, like I can tell you from experience and Blake is even better to, <laughs> to tell you that. You know, uh, Blake and I happened to you do friends and Stelios, he was working like for a big bank for like, you know, more than a decade. Yeah. You know, they've met some of the cream of the crop, you know what I mean? Yeah. My, my uncle was one of the best uh, forex traders in his age. Uh, and he wasn't working in Greece, of course, he was working abroad, like in big banks. You know, performances like those that you see demonstrated are fake 1,000%. Yeah. 1,000. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that, right? Well, I, I say, you know, hedge fund managers do cartwheels doing 25% a year on their money. Yeah, and I'm telling so you. What's that, wrong with that? So, so somebody it, can even make like 50 or 60% if, if, if they're willing to take a big risk. But whenever you see like things, oh, I, I made a million out of 10,000 within a year. No chance in a billion. Yeah. Well, maybe in a billion. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So um, is uh, our CEO here today? Blake? I yeah, just is. waiting for you guys to uh, shut to, up. To, yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, you're a very I mean, you're, you're very you guys go on and on and on. And on you're and a on. very patient man, Blake. You know, Dale no, you're really I, not, Blake. You're not that patient. <laughs> Dale and I, a lethal, a lethal combination with a microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> how you guys? How you guys doing? Okay. Good, so, mate. How was your weekend? Good. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was good. Just. Um, you know, Weather's nice there now, isn't it, buddy? Ah, uh, define nice. I mean, it's still hot. Eighty? Oh, it's not in the eighties no, yet. No, no, not no, yet. Okay. Not All yet. Right. How long? Not yet. So, so anyway, no, it, it, all's good. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just looking forward to this week. We got a busy week in the in the markets, and um, yeah, you know, it's. I mean, you know, we've got everything from, uh, you know, ob obviously jobs, uh, data, uh, coming up. Oh Can yeah. You guys see my charts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we got jobs data this week. We've got, uh, we got the RBA tonight. We've got, um, you know, uh, it's, it it's should a, be, a, it should, it's a Blake Morrow kind of week. Lots of it's, news it's, events. It's a, it's a lot, you know, ADP on Wednesday, you know, all the ISM numbers are coming out this week. So, you know, it's a real busy week. Today's, you know, kind of slow, but we do have the RBA tonight. So that, that might actually be a, a market mover. Um, you know, even though the market's expecting, uh, expecting the RBA to cut, um, the, the, really the risks I think are, are tilted to the upside if they're not as dovish. And we've seen that a lot as of late, you know, the, the central bank will cut, um, the, the currency pair ends up or the currency ends up rallying, um, following just because they just weren't as dovish. Oh, here goes the Euro. Euro finally did it. So the Euro just busted through to 92 taking all all the stops um you know just you guys just you know note that we're you know we expected this to happen so here we are just taking out all the stops below 109 um and uh it's happening yeah so we'll see if we uh we'll see we'll see how much downside follow through we get through here so what do you think in 10850 i think andre had numbers around there. um you know, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, Any extensions or anything down there? You know, the, the, the extensions that you'll see that come in, you know, they come in and I'll have to, I'll Not redraw lower. them right here. So. Blake, this is a shorter term chart, so you don't have it there, but we have the 78.6% fib, which I'm sure you have it on the daily. We have the 78.6% fee, but 1081. That dates, you know, uh, back from the move that started uh, higher years ago in 2016 until we found the high um, in 2018. 
Yeah, I mean, if we're we're just doing a stop hunt right now, I mean, we we might get down to the seventies, and then you know, I I I don't know if I'd be you know chasing it down here. And just remember, you know, if you go to the daily chart, and you know, when Gregor was on, he just said, ah, pass on the euro, but he was looking for, I believe, some weakness, Blake, to buy cable. Um, Gregor from last well, week. You know, they're, he's gonna get it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the, pound, the pound's kind of falling, but we, we've got this head and shoulder pattern that should complete here. Uh, that's a two-hour chart, which I don't do not Okay, want, but that's Paul Franco does that. Um, you know, the pound might extend to a one twenty-two thirty. I, I think you know, that was his range, huh? I think that may have been his, yeah, uh, you know, buy entry. That's you know quite possibly it and so we'll we'll see so, we'll see so if people sign here. up right now they could go see what greg is looking for for a cable entry yeah yeah see, that's what we can do and you should yes be able to all do you have to do too. is go over to forex analytics go to the pound and uh look at where you know it says elliot wave which i'm not going to pull it up right now okay. um but yeah let's see i, I want to see how the euro reacts here because this this is just a stop run that's all this is how far it extends down, you know, I think it could, you know, extend to 77. I think it's quite possible, but um, we'll see, you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see if, if we pop right back above uh, 109 here in the next 10 minutes, then it's probably going to go back to 109, 30, 109, 40. That, that's what, that would be my assumption. So just be really careful chasing the Euro down here. I, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know if we're going to get all that, a, a whole lot of follow through the daily chart still you know big descending wedge here you know big yeah, descending wedge still diverging yeah you can you can probably you know argue that we just are pushing just slightly below it you know yeah throw again, over yeah it, it could be a throw over so let's just you know let's see how we react here i don't i don't know if i get super excited about it just yet but um uh, I, like I said, I'd like to see how it reacts down here. And it is Euro, it's not just Euro centric because, you know, we do have the cable coming under some pressure. We've got, but I mean, the Euro is what's bringing in all the dollar, dollar um, uh, strength. One of the other currency pairs we were looking at earlier this morning would be the Swissy. Where, where's the Swissy? Yeah, I got through 50. Yeah, so it just, it put, took out the 200 day moving average um we are challenging the underside of this broken trend line we're getting to the 88 percent retracement which comes in at 99 you know 65 uh we made note of that uh with forex analytics that that could be a good shot yeah i mean if you're if you know i'm again i i would be re really more focused on what's happening with the euro here and uh seeing if the euro is indeed um you know, would you, would you prefer to get long euro rather than look to get short U.S. dollar Swiss? Although Swiss is not making a new high, and the euro is making a new low. Well, the Swissy, the problem is, is the carry. So if okay. you're short, Got you know, it. if you're yeah. short the dollar Swiss, you have to you, pay them to make it be you wrong. You do. You have to yeah. make sure that you're really, really well positioned that day. So, okay. like if I was to short the dollar Swiss, like let's say I was to short it, which I'm not at this moment, but let's say I did. Yeah. Um, and and it I took a week to, to develop. It, it would it would have to be like it would have to close. I'd have to be up 30, 40 pips and say, you know, I, I'm willing to I'm now I'm willing to hold it because I had such good placement in price. So, okay, but, got it. Yeah, like I said, watch the euro here. If, you know, if we get back above 109, I wouldn't want to be short. So, but the data has been weak. We just had um, we just had German inflation data came in, you know, slightly weaker than expected. I think that's probably the catalyst that finally, you know, the the straw that broke the camel's back per se that pushed us over the 109 uh, level through the stops. But like I said, I I don't know if I'd be super excited about it down here. It's one of those things that uh, it, 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 it broke, but it looks to me like a stop run at, at this moment. But, you know, w we won't know that probably for like an hour or two. And, um, you know, seeing how it responds down here is going to be is going to be key because uh, I've been looking at it down here. I've been looking at wanting to get long below 109 just a little earlier in the chat room. I was like, OK, euro looks weak. Let's see if we can we can take out the stops below 109. We are now taking out the stops below 109. Now it's if if 
you know, and I'm looking at it specifically uh, for this. If we get back above 109, let's say we get back towards 109.10, then, you know, I might actually start playing it on the long side. If, if that's the case, you know, especially if we have an hourly or a four hour close back above 109, back above 109.10, I'd be happy with that. I'd be like willing to take a counter trend, you know, let's go the other direction and, and see if we can, we can, you know, ride this up 30 or 40 pips. That, that would be my, my, uh, my plan. But uh, if you guys use uh, or, or you're not, you're not even using Forex analytics, but you, you read the blog, like, you know, I blogged about this on Thursday. So if you go to the blog, and I think the last uh, chart was the Euro dollar, and you can you know, read it here. Looks to test the 109 level overnight, but traders should be aware of the longer term descending wedge. You know, yeah, I just map it all out. And it looks like um, the risks of a break lower, because everybody was calling a triple bottom, it looked like we we're going to break lower because you had to you had to get everybody out that was buying the euro at 10960 on this uh, everybody was buying it here one two three triple bottom so everybody that got long here it should be getting stopped out right now and so now that they're stopped out you know let's let's see if let's see if there's enough, uh, you know, enough momentum to carry it back in, and you know, back above 109, and it's questionable. It is, it's questionable as of right now. Now, one of the other things that uh, I know Steve wants to talk about, so I'm not going to talk uh, in great length. I'm not even going to show you the chart because he was asked about precious metals in the um, in the chat room. But the one thing I want to I do want to note is that we do have gold and we do have silver that's heavy today, so that could be weighing on. You know the euro it's got you know it's 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 given the us dollar a little strength at the same time you can see the dollar yen the dollar yen is actually trading stronger uh as well and that's gonna that mirrors um you know the the move that you see in precious metals so as precious metals move lower you're gonna have the dollar yen that's strengthening as well i think the dollar yen is one of those currencies that even though i've i've predominantly been pretty bearish um this is one of those that could really shock people. I, I I think that especially you know going into the next couple of weeks, if there's a U.S. China trade deal, um, the dollar yen could unexpectedly uh, break higher, and I think that is that is the risk. One of the reasons why I say that is you know you take the longer term you know longer term move of the dollar yen. This is a daily chart. You know this is extended out six seven years or uh, five six years. Excuse me. You know, we came down, broke below these lows, but it was a false breakout or a breakdown, right? So you had this this move right here. You had a false breakdown and a reversal. I think the risk might be for a move back up towards the 111 level in the dollar yen. Again, why would that happen? The reason why that would happen is because, you know, you have a U.S.-China trade deal that is more than just a, a truce that happens in the next couple of weeks, we, we will be trading at 110. And and the market is very long yen right now. That's one of the things that you should also note is the market is very long yen. So that means the market is expecting for a week or dollar yen. And uh, we have some good news between China, US, uh, you know, uh, trade talks next week, which will be on Thursday and Friday of next week. We'll get a reversal and, and a probably a fairly strong one, you know, could take us to 110, maybe even 111. So those are, those are things that I think you should be thinking about because right now what I'm the, 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 what's on my radar for this week is obviously the jobs data, you know, that comes out on Friday, all the economic data that we get this week with ISM, um, ADP, that's going to be pretty important all week long. And then next week, it's going to be China trade. And those events, especially on Friday of this week and then Thursday and Friday of next week, that's what's going to drive price probably into the fall. So, uh, and, it, and if you think about, let, just think about this for a moment. And, uh, and, and you know, I'll, I'll let Steve and Stelios uh, talk about this for a little bit, um, or they can, they can bring in some comments. 
if we have a weak jobs number, like I'm, I'm expecting uh, our employment picture to start to sour. Finally, it's been pretty strong, but I'm expecting it to start to sour. If it's not this month, it, it'll be next month. But let's just say for argument's sake, employment data starts coming in a little weaker than expected. Okay. That's going to weaken the dollar that, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, it's going to immediately start weakening the dollar. Now, if you put together a China U S trade deal in two weeks, the, one of the reasons why the U S dollar is so strong is because of the, the tensions between China and U S if that's going to ease, or if it looks like it's going to ease, the dollar will weaken again. So if, if like, let's say we have a weak jobs report and we get a China U S trade deal in the next two weeks, uh, the, the, you could, you could quite possibly see, you know, the dollar yen reverse back towards one Oh six. You could see the Euro dollar push back towards one ten, one eleven. Uh, I think that those are all risks in the market. So, uh, and it, it may not even be dollar yen. If it's China, the dollar yen might actually make it to 109, 110, but we could see the euro dollar back at 110, 111. So those are the things that I'm thinking about moving forward. Today's today's price action is all about, you know, just pushing the stops. But uh, but where we go by the end of the week, it's going to all be driven by data uh, predominantly. So, uh, one with that being things, said, still, one, huh? yeah, one hey, of the things, Steve. One of the things, Blake, that uh, Gregor keeps repeating all the time, he said it last week as well, is that he does not trust at all Monday's price action. And he's very right about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Monday could get that faded. Very often, that, that, yeah, that very often you see moves that are faded next day or moves that... Um, are in the opposite direction of what you see for the rest of the week. So this might be the case, indeed. Yeah, I, I kind of look at Mondays as follow-through days, days to the week we had prior. So the euro closed on kind of a weak note, and we got follow-through today. And yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe. And you know what, Blake? I've seen a lot of turning points, inflection points in the Dixie and the dollar on the NFP that lasts for more than a day. I mean, for weeks. So that could be the day. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah. see. It, it might be it. But, um, but uh, I, like I said, it's all about the euro and where, where we go from here. And in, in, the, in the next hour or two for back above 109 and change, I wouldn't want to be short. I mean, that's just, you know, bottom line. But um, all right. Well, Steve, how you doing today? Good, Blake. Good. I heard Stelios earlier. Good morning. I'm here too. Here. Hey, and, Stel, and how you doing? I'm very well. Can I just say, Sean, that was actually very funny what he wrote. But uh, anyway. Um, I, wrote, I, wrote, I did not see. Um, <laughs> you, you, yes. you have to check it. Okay. All is good. Um, I agree with what you're saying, Blake, uh, regarding the dollar. The more there is this uncertainty on, on where it's going to go with China, the more dollar is going to be a safe haven flow. And uh, like somebody wrote on Twitter today, uh, the dollar is the healthiest horse in the abattoir. But we're still in the abattoir, right? We're, they're all going to get killed. Um, anyway, uh, and also Jane says, um, our friend Jane says, do you really think a trade deal will be met uh, other than buying soybeans and pork in two weeks when Brexit has taken over two years? Yes, Brexit is much more complicated though, right? Trade deal is only one part of uh, the whole Brexit um, uh, saga. And, uh, and all we need really is for um, a, an initial agreement between the, the, the Americans and Chinese, and then everything is going to get slowly sorted. But um, it should be easier to come to a to trade agreement between the U.S. and China, for sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. Thank you, Blake. Yeah, and, I'm going um, to pass it over to you guys. You guys, hey, remember, you, today is the last day to take advantage of the, uh, of the Forex Analytics offer. We are reverting back. So if you guys have not, you know, taken advantage of it, please do join our community, be in our chat rooms. Um, you know, that's where I'm going to be at here in the next 15 minutes. And uh, you guys have a great one. Thanks, Blake. You too, Thanks, buddy. everybody. Thanks, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Okay. Stay, um, stay and of course, yes. one more thing. I mean, it's uh, getting a U.S.-Chinese trade deal can be extremely easy if the criteria are set to low, right? Yeah, so absolutely. It, it, all, it all has to do with what kind of, of a deal uh, are you willing to take? So, you know, if, if you lower the criteria, 
uh, then it can be very, very easy to achieve. If not, it, it can be a pain, obviously, right? Yes. Okay, so um, what else did we have? Uh, what else do we have to do? Okay, Canadian we have some... produce prices. I think we just got that. Uh, 0 0.2. Minor, yeah. Yeah, minor, just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, okay, we had some minor um, data out of Germany. Actually, UK GDP came in in line at minus 0.2%. So unrevised and, uh, you know, we get one more, we get a technical uh, recession, but um, year on year is still um, showing around 1.3 or something like that, if I recall. So, you know, the, the UK is struggling, but remember all the uncertainty at the moment, it's keeping investments down. It's, it's really not a good environment um, at the moment. Uh, German CPI came in in line. I mean, there, there wasn't that much happening. The only thing I want to stress is uh, we had the Saudi crown prince, MBS, I don't want to say the whole name, it's too complicated. Um, he warned that um, a, a war between Saudis and Iran would lead to a total collapse of the global economy. And uh, he, he warned that they would send oil prices to levels unseen before. Obviously, it, it suits Saudis to have uh, high oil prices, but really that's something... Why do uh, you say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Was that on 60 Minutes during his interview? I don't he know, He was actually. interviewed on that. Okay. Was he? Okay, maybe that was yeah. it, yeah. Okay, I didn't watch um, it. So, you know, for, for me, apart from the U.S.-China thing that's happening, um, I think tensions in the Middle East is, is the most important thing right now. And we have to um, not, um, ignore it. It, not ignore it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big issue, I think. There's a lot of people... Needless, needless to say, Stelio, I'm pretty sure that Trump is going to be very, very sensitive about the price of oil. Because think about it. The only excuse, I mean, it's a lousy, stupid and dangerous excuse, but regardless, that central banks have been using to ease their monetary policy further for the time being is inflation. Okay, that they, we don't have enough of inflation, like inflation is a good thing and you should be striving to get more. Anyhow, not to open this conversation again. So imagine if something happens and crude skyrockets to 80, 90, yeah. 100, or whatever. Handcuffs of Fed. Yeah, exactly. So then they have to make a decision. They either have to openly admit that they're not targeting inflation anymore, which we, we know they're not doing. So why, why do we know? Because in order for them not to, not to appear uh, that, you know, that they're doing what they're doing, which is ignoring inflation in favor of asset prices, etc., they've kept moving the goalposts having to do with what kind of inflation that target they have. Plus they and and they moving have. the calculation as well. And mo exactly. Plus yeah. changing the calculation and again and again through hedonic adjustments and, and all that BS to show less inflation than what we actually have in the system. So imagine what's going to happen if crude messes up completely this approach and they, they're forced to acknowledge that oh yeah, you know, we have 3% inflation, but, uh, you know, it's okay for a limited amount of time. But then everybody realizes what's at play. And if the markets actually acknowledge and the, the average investor acknowledges that central banks are actually willing to let inflation run, imagine what's going to happen with bonds. We're going to have a massacre there sooner or later. So crude prices are super critical for the monetary easing plan to go forward, right? Yep, absolutely. And I do agree about the next bond move, by the way. Um, okay, uh, that's it, really. Uh, otherwise, a very quiet weekend, really. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, to, to note. Yeah, let's see what we get during the week. Anyhow, we've started in, you know, in a positive note, in the sense we, we see some we see some moves that might lead to some breakouts, specifically besides the fact that um, we had new lows in EURUSD as Blake was showing, uh, t testing the descending wedges support once again. Look at the DXY, which of course is doing more or less the opposite. Looks at the, look at the DXY, which is currently trading as we speak at uh, highs we haven't seen since May 2017. Okay. And let's see how we're going to close the day, because don't forget we have this blue ascending channel 
which the market has been respecting since the end of 2018. Um, and, you know, if we do close today above it, that's definitely going to be um, also a technical uh, breakout uh, that the market is going to notice and, you know, probably not one that you should be fading. But as Blake said, it all depends. Let's see how the next few hours uh, up until tomorrow, let's say, because, you know, we might have like a complete retracement on Tuesday, but you know, if we see a couple of days staying below uh, those levels in the Euro USD and above those levels in the DXY, I think you should seriously take into account that as a major technical development in the FX um, uh, environment in general. Now, um, having to do with some other majors, keep in mind that cable has produced this breakdown from that confluence of resistances up there. We're looking forward to seeing how it's going to respond from this uh, 122.70 area. 122.70 is the uh, 50 DMA and the 50% FIB, so both uh, are there. But I have to admit it looks uh, heavy from here. Um, Aussie coiling near the lows, but not at new lows. So, you know, another day of divergence with the Kiwi. Keep in mind, we have RBA today, so Everything can change having to do with uh, Aussie and, you know, uh, accordingly to anything that includes Aussie. Uh, for example, keep in mind Aussie Kiwi got initially rejected from that nice confluence of resistances, moving higher, but it can easily produce another leg lower uh, later today. Depends on, uh, you know, what um, they do. Um, I mean, if for some reason they don't cut, I'm, I'm pretty certain it, you know, Aussie is going to fly and along with it any, um, you know, any cross rate that includes it. Um, in, in that case, Aussie against the USD should begin another leg to the upside, in essence creating a nice divergence with what Kiwi has been doing. Kiwi, just a few hours ago, was trading at a new low, I mean, you have to go back to two thousand fifteen to find you know uh, lows um, you know equivalent you know levels. So we're talking about like four year uh, lows. so obviously they're still diverging now it remains to be seen if the OZ is going to follow to new lows uh, to tonight or if it's going to keep diverging, in which case I think that Kiwi um, will probably at some point also reverse higher and play out, uh, you know, to this divergence. Regardless, as we've said many times, 64.25 is, is a key resistance for the Kiwi, and as long as we trade below it, uh, irrespective of how many divergences we see, for example, here in the RSI or between Kiwi and the Aussie, you know, you should, you should keep respecting the downside. Next downside um, target, 61.50, the 161.8% extension. I think it's, it's worth monitoring that. Uh, now, let me have a look at your questions, by the way, because we have quite a lot of people writing in. Uh, shocking to hear about ICT. Yep. Um, not really shocking, to be honest, but I mean, yeah, and not an exception. Uh, hi, Blake. Kiwi Yen. Yeah, we can have a look at both the Aussie Yen and the Kiwi Yen since you asked for it. Let me see what else we have. Uh, Swiss, it's a safe haven. And with volatility being at the risk on mode, it could continue to rally higher. Definitely huge divergence between USD Swiss and Euro USD. I mean, Euro USD is trading at multi year lows. USD Swiss is far away from the recent highs. So, Another type of divergence like Aussie, Kiwi, as we were talking about, but a much bigger one. Uh, do you really think a trade deal will be met other than buying soybeans and pork? No, um, Jane, uh, let me answer this question very clearly. I think it's going to be extremely hard to produce a trade deal that's going to have substance for the US. If Trump is forced to produce quickly a trade deal, He's going to try to present it like uh, the new NAFTA, 
he was accusing NAFTA of being one of the worst deals ever. He revamped it. I mean, back then I actually went down and read plenty of articles, you know, with bullet points of what the changes are. Trust me, I mean, the changes were less than 10%. Um, insignificant changes, I mean, very minor changes. And then he, he, he presented it as like the best deal ever. So, you know, he's going to do something like that if, we, if he's forced to produce for X, Y, Z reason a, a, a U.S.-Chinese trade deal, he's going to do more or less the same. I mean, he's going to, they're going to have like minor, minor changes and he's going to present it like it's something huge, something like groundbreaking. Um, not, uh, Steve, you don't know how to think crazy. To Trump, higher oil will be great because the U.S. now produces most of it. Note, I don't agree with that, though. Um, yeah, but you know how it is, Ziggy. I mean, somebody can make an argument of who is the marginal producer now, so how, mu how much of an effect um, Middle East trouble is going to have, but pre I'm pretty sure it's going to have a big effect to the crude prices, okay? And uh, one way or another, uh, the U.S. is still importing uh, crude, uh, first of all. Second of all, uh, don't forget that crude, I know you're not forgetting, I'm just mentioning it. Uh, crude is um, uh, something used in the production of, uh, in the production of movement of like the vast majority of the items. So higher crude prices one way or another is definitely, definitely going to spill over to the CPI readings, definitely. Uh, if I expect that gas to go around 228 to 30, I haven't checked that in some time. We can check it together. Let me start by covering Aussie uh, yen and Kiwi yen, and we're going to go there. So, Aussie yen. One more day of consolidation on top of this horizontal support resistance area at 72.50. So, you know, so far this consolidation is definitely not inspiring in the sense, I mean, there is there is this is the type of consolidation that you expect to break in the direction of the previous move which in this case was lower of course anything can happen since we're on top of support but i have to tell you it doesn't look good uh so from a technical perspective it you know if we didn't have the rba today i would say that you know this looks like a good opportunity to be short for another leg lower and if you have a look at the kiwi yen which is not going to be affected by the rba today obviously i mean it might by, but in a minor way um you see more or less the same deal i mean look at this price action it looks like a little bear flag developing after this leg lower so both of them look like they want to continue lower okay now uh besides the obvious which i've mentioned multiple times we have the rba today so it can move uh, anything that has to do with the Aussie quite significantly, there's no question about it. Having to do with the Kiwi, now with the Kiwi Yen specifically, keep in mind that we have this nice descending uh, channel that the market has been respecting for quite some time um, and support is not far away. Um, we also have this previous low at 66.30, bottom line, uh, I don't know how big any follow through to the downside can be because we're going to be entering an area of support. So that is something else to notice. Regardless, in the short term, it looks like Kiwi Yen wants to continue uh, lower. At least that's what the price action tells us. And the same thing applies to the Aussie Yen. Uh, now, we had questions about almost everything that involves uh, precious metals, so I'm going to have a look at that as well. But you asked about nat gas. Remind me, is it what's the ticket we've been looking at? And gas. Yeah, and gas. Yeah, okay. So we haven't had a look at that in quite some time. You can see from where the drawings. And here, so let's extend this horizontal zone that we had and let's see what has been happening. Okay, anyhow, uh, back then, because this is where we were looking at it last time, probably in February, because I see where I drew, you know, the lines. We said back then, you know, that we were at a major support area and, you know, whatever happened had to happen from there. 
we had an initial rebound from what we see, but eventually we broke lower. We produced some follow through, not a bad one. I mean, we came very, very close to $2. Um, then we had a quite a nice rebound and now we seem to be failing once again. So let's do some analysis here and see what to expect. So, first of all, this move looks like it could have been channeled. And why do we care post-mortem, post-fact? In this case, since we don't have anybody. We care because we might see that channel acting as support if retested, right? So that's one factor to consider. Also, let's feed this. Okay, so we're going past the 50% feed, 61.8 at 229. Now, we had the lows at 160. Keep in mind that I, I've talked about that in the past. Keep in mind that when we see the distribution of prices in anything that's physical, because this is a physical commodity, right? This is something that people use. This is something, this is not a stock company. This is not something that can ever go to zero, right? I mean, it's not a, a stock of a company that can go broke tomorrow and price going literally to zero. This is a physical thing that has usage in real life. That means that there is something going for you the lower the price goes. We know very well that the distribution of prices in physical commodities is nothing like um, uh, a normal distribution because you always have fat tails to the right hand side, which means that you can frequently see events that will create abnormally high prices, but it is, you know, extremely unlikely when, we, when you're trading near the lows to see, you know, some, some kind of a huge event that will take prices, let's say, at 80 cents. Uh, because, you know, it's still something that has costs to produce, distribute, etc. Meaning very, very low prices, like close to $2, give you, um, you know, quite a nice risk-reward risk -reward ratio. Now, I think that at the very least, we might produce one more leg higher from here to at least get a more proper corrective move to this whole move from the spike high to 490 down to almost two dollars so i think that you know attempts to buy the 61.8 or even the 78.6 and the retest of that uh, descending channel might be worth a shot that's what i think especially considering that um uh, you know and natural gas prices are somewhat correlated to crude obviously and at any given point we might might get some you know uh, geopolitical event that will lead to a big spike higher so that's what i think about natural gas um now precious metals so let's take them one by one beginning from palladium if you remember I made it quite clear that once we went past the 1600 level and when we were retracing back in this corrective manner uh, after having triggered this cap and handle formation uh, that you know that implied much higher targets and you know there we are I mean earlier today we traded fractionally above 1700 which is like $100 higher within a few days so there is no question about it. Palladium remains very, very well bid. The implied target of this cap and handle formation is quite higher. Um, if I remember right, it's like 1930, 1950, somewhere there. Uh, the 161.8% extension of this corrective move is lower at 1830. Anyhow, bottom line, uh, Palladium remains you know, very, very bullish. 
Um, and, you know, that's the technical fact as long as we trade above 1600. Now, having to do with gold and silver, first of all, gold about to trigger uh, on a daily close below here, a head and shoulders formation pattern. You can see it here. I mean, if we ignore the short term formations like triangles and things like that, it's not very hard to see. There we go. Shoulder, head, shoulder, neckline, something like this, a little bit lower. Okay, so that would imply a move towards 1420, I would say. I, I don't even care to measure the objective because I like this area. I might be a little bit shorter than the head and shoulders formation objective, but that's quite a good area. If you zoom out, you, you will find out why. Um, so gold in the precipice of a breakdown, which will point uh, to a much deeper correction uh, while silver is leading, right? I mean, we saw one leg lower, a nice rebound, another leg lower, uh, which would target uh, levels close to 16 and a half. So um, I see no real reason why we can't make it there. Uh, 16 and a half is also more or less where you find this broken trend line resistance that might act in this case as support. So I do think that the path of least resistance for those two metals remains the downside. Now having to do with, because we have that question as well, uh, having to do with the gold-silver ratio, remains to be seen what kind of a move we have here in the gold-silver ratio. Is it the beginning? Uh, are we in the beginning of another like very bullish move towards 100? Uh, so the move lower is already done and over and it was this corrective move lower? Or is this a corrective rebound? We're gonna find out quite soon because if the latter is the case, I wouldn't want to see uh, levels higher than 88. So 88 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold. Okay, I think you know, that, that is quite a critical um, area that will uh, you know, uh, tell us uh, what's the case here with, with the gold-silver ratio. And one more, which is platinum. Platinum actually is the one that uh, indi indicated better than any of the metals, the failure up there. Why? Because platinum actually had a one day false break higher from this multi year. You can see it. I have to zoom and zoom and zoom, but you can see this multi year trend line, right? So I was monitoring very closely this trend line. We only broke above it for one day, usually, you know. False breaks like that one are very good indicators that you know you might get the exact opposite move. So platinum actually was one of the metals that uh, indicated that something might be uh, about to break um, in in the rally that we had. Now, if we want to have a discussion about the direction, the longer term direction of the metals. I think it's higher, right? But, you know, we have an ongoing corrective move and we need to respect that. The last monetary policy, the RBA, uh, they said they were keeping an eye on the labor market and after having seen the unemployment rate increasing from 5.2 to 5.3, the RBA might ease the rate tonight. Yep, that's the case exactly. Uh, Patrick says dollar index, uh, the bonds are inverted, there will still be rate cut in the next Fed meeting. Powell keeps on Joe Bonning. The dot plot also indicates that the Fed were cutting rates up to 1.5 in, in 2020. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I can tell you one thing for sure and you should never say that in trading, but I'm going to say it now. I'm absolutely certain that the dot plot is completely wrong. 
not only for the reason because it has been in the vast majority of the cases wrong over and over and over again for years, but for the very simple reason that whoever believes that the Fed is going to slowly ease for another, let's say, 15 months and everything is going to be fine, uh, I think is living in, in dreamland. I believe that by the end of 2020, since you mentioned what the dot plots say by then, we're either going to be more or less where we are or higher, my opinion, very, very little chance, or we're going to be back at zero. Uh, so I view this more or less as a binary event. Okay, that, that's my point of view. And as I said, the vast majority of the chances, we're going to be at zero. So I'm pretty sure that the dot plot is wrong, one way or another. Okay. Um, so let's see if we have a, any thoughts on USDZR. Yeah, absolutely. We can cover that. Let's see. USD MXN, by the way, um, a nice healthy rebound from the 618 but keep in mind, because I see a lot of people trading the USD MXN, Blake does that successfully in, in the short term. Uh, personally, it's not my cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea in the sense I find no reason with my trading style why I should be trading, you know, something that is coiling in a multi-year symmetrical triangle. You can see it here. I mean, this triangle dates back to 2016, uh, but I will be very, very much willing to trade this once it breaks out, okay? Regardless, while still bounded, uh, you know, within the confines of the symmetrical triangle, a nice reaction from the 61.8. Um, just mentioning since, you know, I was looking at it earlier as I did the USDZR. Now, having to do with the USDZR, you can see here that, first of all, we have to accept that we've been in an uptrend since uh, early 2018. Why is that? And why isn't it debatable? Simply because since then, we have a series of higher lows, right? Basic. definition of an uptrend, right? You can see it here. And perhaps one more here, right? There you go. So I know that it hasn't been doing much lately. I mean, somebody can see this as a large range, but you know, if you zoom a little bit more, you can see that at least since February, 2018, we've been in an uptrend. So that probably means that you need to respect the possibility, which is a distant possibility, to come up, retest once again this 15 and a half area, and this time actually continue higher, right? You can even make the claim that this is an ugly looking cup and handle formation. I have to admit, an ugly looking like cup, and now we've been creating the handle. So, I see no reason why somebody would want to be short other than looking at lower time frames. I'm, I'm giving you the big picture here, okay? And especially, you don't want to be short if we close above 15.50 on the daily. Uh, because I'm pretty sure that that's going to take us to the next upside objective, the 78.6, quite, quite fast. Ayaz asks for more or less everything that is cable related found usd we already saw that and we were very limited on time now uh pound dose in pound kiwi let's have a brief uh, look at pound dose in pound kiwi and i'm assuming coach that your uh, guest is here I, I if you are here peter goldstein please send me a message i'm hoping you're not the phone call in listener if you are you need to hang up and log in with your desktop or laptop, because I can't make you a presenter if you're a call-in listener. I've been trying to Are you sure you about Twitter. that, Coach? Oh, I'm not sure. The, the reason I'm asking if you're sure is, let me see, because, you know, they keep... Changing it? 
if they keep up making updates, perhaps okay. you know. In... Well, Peter, are you here? Are you good? You're probably you're probably right though, uh, because I see it in the list one phone call listener, and there's nothing I can do. I mean, I can't try to click on yeah, him and somehow right. promote him. So yeah, I... if he, if he's listening in through phone. He's got to hang up and, and log in on his computer with a microphone. Yes. Yes. That so is correct. if you're listening in, that's it, Peter. So yes. uh, right now, I would say we don't have a guest. It's extremely likely he's the one listening in through phone. Yeah. Okay. Extremely likely. Uh, so see if you can communicate with him and, you know, I, I, can, I can cover questions. Okay. okay. So Poundosi, uh, big picture. Poundosi is trading since one and a half years ago within an expanding triangle. You can see it here. Now, already having said in a sense that we have no trend because that's the case, keep in mind that we have been rejected from that confluence of resistances and this channel of resistance a few days ago and we're in the middle of the channel. So if we do break below this channel support at 180, uh, you know, we can easily extend lower still remaining within this larger range. So I would expect lower prices in that case. I drew that several days ago before we even got rejected, what you see here. Now, if we find support here, because we are sitting on a support area, um, another move towards 186 is very likely. But as you see, there is no real trend. More or less the same case with the pound kiwi, not exactly the same case, but equivalent. We've been rebounding within an ascending channel, but this within the boundaries of this long-term ascending channel, this larger ascending channel, you can see it here drawn in purple. So, you know, same deal here. I mean, we're close to support. The risk reward ratio in the short term would uh, favor long positions, but Pay attention to 194 because if we do break below 194, uh, I would expect more weakness and we do have the space to move lower uh, before we reach the uh, ascending channel support once again. Okay, so that's that's my viewpoint on Pound Aussie and Pound Kiwi. Let me see if we have more questions. Uh, someone wants you to look at S and P's. So, open market system operation does it mean that the Fed is pumping money in the circulation now? Since well, the consumer spending started to show that the economy is going into a bad economy. So, when bond markets are actually inverted, will the rate reset back to zero? Yeah. The, first of all, the Fed manipulates uh, heavily. Manipulates the central banks in general heavily manipulate the rates. At some point, they will have to reset to what they need to be. Now, having to do with open market circulation doesn't work exactly like that. The Fed cannot create outright money. What they can do is that they can create reserves for the banks to exchange reserves with bonds. So then the banks can use the reserves to expand the money in circulation because the Fed does not create money, the banks do. But it's just the mechanism because in essence, it's, you know, in essence, the essence is what you're saying. The mechanism is a little bit different in, in all actuality. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, in essence, we, we are quickly headed back to quantitative easing. Now, keep in mind from what I've been reading, they don't want to name it anymore quantitative easing as they didn't want to name quantitative easing what it initially was which was uh, and is um, debt monetization. The reason they don't want to do that is, first of all, they're not allowed to monetize debt. I remind you that Bernanke had to go in front of Congress and tell sure. them that, no, no, what we're doing is not debt monetization. This is like, you know, uh, short-term actions in, in, for an economy that is in distress. And, you know, once we... Uh, get out of the tough situation, we will sell back the, the bonds in the market. 
because of course, you know, we don't want to go into debt monetization. He didn't say so, in 10 years we would start doing that. Yeah, of course not. He said, yeah. you know, soon. Yeah. So <laughs> 10 years later, uh, they, they want to start quantitative easing again, but this time they don't want to name it quantitative easing because as debt monetization had a stigma, now quantitative easing had a stigma. Why has a stigma? Why? Because they proclaimed that quantitative easing was emergency measures for an economy that was in deep, deep shit. The worst kind. Ooh. Of, yeah, the worst kind of bad uh, word. Yeah, the, the worst kind of uh, economic crisis the U.S. had experienced since the Great Depression in, in 1929 and the 30s. Oh, let me so tell now, you, I, I had to walk around with cardboard, cardboard in my shoes, with a <laughs> hole in my shoe, and I walked so, 20 miles yeah. to school. So for, obvious reasons, so for obvious reasons, since the wording quantitative easing was combined with a very, very weak, ever struggling economy, the worst financial crisis since 1929, they now want to do the same thing, but they want to wrap it up differently. They want to give it a different name in this case. Regardless, it is the proof of what I had been saying forever that quantitative vision cannot succeed because the only way, of course, they proclaimed success very early on, but you cannot say that the policy of quantitative easing was successful until you actually manage to take off all the extra money from the balance sheet. So in order for you to say quantitative, uh, quantitative easing was successful was to prove that you can take the balance sheet to do the easy thing, which is taking the balance sheet of the Fed from one trillion to four trillion, four and a half trillion as it happened, and then prove that you can take the balance back to one trillion. What did they do? They managed to take down the balance sheet from like 4.5, not even 4.5, 4.3, 4.4 to 3.7. And they had to immediately stop what they were doing and they're about to reverse course uh, because the economy would fall apart. So I think if there is, if you need any more evidence that quantitative easing does not work to uh, balance a nailing economy, that's it. I mean, they managed to uh, offload a fraction of what they had to accumulate during the financial crisis, and probably wave three is starting now for those that know Elliott Wave. I wouldn't be surprised in, if in three years from now, Fed's balance sheet is at $8 trillion. Okay. Coach? Yeah, well, I, you know, whoever called in hung up didn't leave me a message. Didn't, eh? Okay. No, so I guess I'll have to reschedule Peter. I really, yeah, Peter's made some fantastic calls on turns in the market. Oh, he has. I, I remember, Peter. He, yeah. He's, he's good in what he does. Very good. So Please, you know, please make sure that you reschedule and uh, I you will. Him, uh, tell him, you know, to, to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Dark because, Star. Uh, maybe we could wrap it up. I wouldn't mind seeing your view. Dark Star, which is a, a song, Dark Star, or something like that, wants you to look at TLTs, TLT, and tell me what you think. Uh, I was thinking maybe we'd get a C wave to the downside on TLT. I'm not sure. Let me find the ticket because I'm not sure. Uh, well, you, TLT, could just, by the way, you could just type it in. Uh, we not, get it. Yeah, we do have it. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the most popular bond. ETF. I know it's the twenty-year one. Yeah, yeah. It's a See year it one. there. Uh, by the way, coach. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Um, we either fail here, or we blow the new highs. You know. Obviously, a, obviously, still in an uptrend, but yeah. I would pay close attention to this area. Because uh, I know you were talking about maybe uh, reshorting bonds. You were uh, I stalking them last week or something, or treasuries. Yeah, you know? exactly. But look yeah. at this area. Look where we found resistance Yeah. at the TLT, right? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Not only previous low here, but zoom out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You see? So, may, so maybe the first of, break. That was pretty impulsive, don't you think? High of, the, of 2016. So what I'm trying to say here is... Key, key area, because as long as we stay below it, That's I wouldn't be thinking. surprised 
to see yeah. another leg lower. That's exactly the path I was thinking. Yeah. We must be uh, kindred spirits. Kindred charged spirits. Charged we're both, spirits. We're both Gemini, so you can look oh, at Oh, that's as, right. As yeah. 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 We are. I'm the handsome twin. <laughs> I, I'm the I'm the uh, young one. Hold it, yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> we're the only twins that were born forty years apart. Exactly. Anyway, anyway, so I guess after forty years, come on, after in, in order for that to be forty years, you would have to be eighty now, like seventy nine to be exact. <laughs> Tomorrow, if our guest shows up, should be interesting. It's uh, going to be Francesca River Riviola who was one of the founders of FX Street. So I'm hoping Francesco oh, nice. makes it here. So, we, you know, he's got a very good handle on what's happening in the industry and what's happening with FX It's a he. Street. It's a he, yeah. Ah, if it's a he, then it has to be Francesco, not Francesca. Francesca okay, is said, a female. I, I just call him Francesca, period. Okay. I don't think it's there's Francesco, a vowel. Then. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, so everyone, last day. Sign up, hang out with us, have a great Christmas, New Year's with us, and or else, you know what? Uh, just keep trying to get everything for free in your life. That's up to you, but you're going to pay the universal price for that when you are trying to move something to other people. They're going to want it for free from you. So uh, anyway, that's what I've discovered. If you're a mooch, people will mooch you. So... Um, Besides being a mooch, don't forget to <laughs> don't just count your pips, mooch. Count your blessings, and uh, if you count your blessings, you don't worry about spending money because you believe in abundance rather than scarcity. And I know the difference because I've lived from both places. So that's a wrap. We'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Maybe we finish off this dollar rally this high. I I think that uh, I could smell it. Okay. And I'm thinking it's around 99.90, 99.80. Maybe we get 100 print, but I'm sitting on my hands until we get there. And as Tom Petty said, the waiting is the hardest part. So everyone have a great day. And Steve, thank you for a great review. And uh, thank see, you, Coach. Every, uh, see everyone tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. And adios from your team that is trying to help you every day and we lay it all on the field just like the chicago bears defense did yesterday adios